Live TV is so unpredictable, it can be almost nerve-wracking. One small slip up can end your career as you know it and you can't take anything back. The pressures of live TV must be insane and so many celebrities have fallen victim to its career ending ways. I've dug through some more unfortunate mishaps, so let's count down the top 10 celebrities who destroyed their careers on live TV part two. At number 10, Charlie Sheen. After having a hugely successful career, actor Charlie Sheen started to have a downward spiral. There are many reasons for this, but his struggles became something the media was always covering at the time. Every step he took, every move he made, every single day, the media was surely watching him. Everything sort of came crashing down for him after he did a live interview with 2020 where he ranted about the two and a half men creator, Chuck Lore. This interview was all over the place with Charlie waving his hands about frantically and even going so far as to call Chuck a turd and a clown. The media labeled him as crazy and really just pushed him to his breaking point. I think his career downfall was a combination of his behavior in this interview as well as the media's portrayal of him, making people have a very different opinion on him. It was all very publicized at the time, so maybe if people were a little more understanding and patient with him, things would have been different. But instead, Charlie's career is pretty much done for. At number nine, Doug Williams. Usually when someone's career is demolished on live TV, it's because they've done something or said something. Nine times out of 10, it's their own fault, but here's a story about someone whose career was ended by someone else. Comedian Doug Williams was invited to be part of a comedy roast, a program where a bunch of comedians and other public figures are invited to take the mic and comically roast one of their peers. It can be really funny to watch, at least until the jokes turn to you. Doug here was invited to be part of the lineup at Shaq's all-star comedy roast of football player Emmett Smith, and after being introduced by host Jamie Foxx, he started his set. After a few punchlines, Jamie started to chime in, putting Doug in the hot seat rather than Emmett. He started mocking Doug's jokes and punchlines and really just roasted him instead. It was a lot to take in, especially for Doug, who really wasn't expecting the tables to be turned like that. The whole unscripted ordeal was just a mess that ended Doug's career in that moment. Jamie later defended his actions, but that really didn't help the situation. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a big ol' thumbs up on this video if you're enjoying it so far. And also, head on over to my gaming channel, Viper Girl, and check that out and subscribe with you there. At number eight, Jackie Mason. I'm sure we are all aware of how touchy TV networks are about saying expletives. Saying some kind of adult word can cause some serious consequences, but what about hand gestures? Well, it turns out that those are also a huge no-no, and someone actually had their whole career ended because of it. Comedian Jackie Mason had been working on the Ed Sullivan show for a bit back in the day, and it made him pretty successful. He was given a contract for six appearances, which was set to earn him around $45,000, which is more like $350,000 in today's money since this all happened way back in the 60s. Either way, it was a very well-paying job, only for having to do six appearances. Anyway, his entire contract was essentially ripped up after he got in trouble for flipping the bird on stage. Jackie was playing off one of the stage managers who was making gestures with his fingers to indicate how much time he had left, but he went a little too far. He pointed his finger around the room while saying, quote, here's a finger for you, and a finger for you, and a finger for you, unquote. This kind of behavior was not allowed, and so he was booted off the show, and his career pretty much ended after that. At number seven, Howard Dean. When you're on live TV, you want to be engaging and exciting, right? You want to be able to captivate your audience, even when you don't have a huge production to back you up. Well, apparently you can take your excitement a little too far, because this, could destroy your career. This is what happened with former governor of Vermont, Howard Dean, back in 2004. Dean was a Democratic presidential candidate who was going up against George W. Bush. For a while, Dean was ahead in the polls, leaving the other candidates in the dust, but soon that gap started to close and he had to get more serious about his presidential dream to make them happen. He couldn't afford any other slip ups because that could cost him the race. But unfortunately for him, that is exactly what happened. In order to get his supporters more engaged, Dean addressed one of his rallies with a very energetic speech, saying that he was going to dominate the polls, win support, and quote, take back the White House. But his speech was a little too riveting and it had the opposite effect. And then we're going to Washington DC to take back the White House! Yeah! The media ended up picking this clip apart and it made him look terrible. It all cost him his presidential hopes, all because he was just trying to be a hype beast. At number six, Belle Gibson. It's all fun and games until the truth comes out. 
Health blogger Val Gibson was really popular a few years ago when she rose to fame promoting her healthy living. Val made a name for herself as something of a wellness ambassador who promoted clean eating and even released a cookbook called The Whole Pantry. She pretty much based her entire image on the claim that she had been using her healthy eating to manage her brain cancer. But soon, that charade was over and it was revealed that she had been lying about her illness. Belle was never actually sick and she basically just conned everyone. This reveal came about during an interview with the Australian version of 60 Minutes, where her various instances of manipulation were revealed, including, quote, befriending a family with a young boy suffering from cancer in order to gain first-hand information of what the disease entailed, taking money meant for charitable purposes and keeping it, as well as misrepresenting her age." End quote. Though the interview wasn't necessarily live, the information that was shared wasn't cut out and was broadcast to the world. After this interview, she was labeled a fraud and her career stopped dead in its tracks. At number five, Jamie Kennedy. Imagine having your career be ruined just because your show sucked. Sounds awful, but this is sort of what happened to comedian Jamie Kennedy. Jamie was part of a group of public figures who were hosting a New Year's Eve broadcast in 2012, and though most people thought that this broadcast would just go unnoticed as people partied the night away, it sort of had the opposite effect as many people tuned in to watch the cringe fest. Apparently, the show was very poorly put together with a lot of awkward silences and even their countdown clock being off so they rang in the new year just a little bit later than everyone else. Most people recall Jamie looking lost on camera, not knowing who to talk to and which camera to look at. It was overall a very bad show and Jamie took the fall for it. His career suffered a lot after that night. At number four, Bill Mayer. When it comes to language, you have to be very wary of the things that you say. We all know that explicit language is not allowed on many programs, take SNL for example, but the one thing that is absolutely forbidden is using slurs. No matter what program you're on, you are not allowed to say such things. I mean, they should never be said period, but especially on live TV. Some people though, go against this rule and do it anyway, like Bill Mayer. The late night talk show host got himself into heaps of trouble after using the N-word on live TV. On his HBO show, Real Time with Bill Mayer, he dropped the N-word while talking to Senator Bill Sass. When the senator told Bill that he would like to invite him to visit Nebraska and quote, have you work in the field with us, Bill replied, scoffing at the idea, saying, quote, I am a house N-word. After those words left his mouth, the fury came from the public condemning his use of that word. Though he thought he was using it in a joking manner, that didn't take away from the fact that he actually said it and the severity of his actions. Bill was subsequently ripped apart by his audience and even other late night personalities like Stephen Colbert. Something as serious as saying a word like that is hard to come back from and his career hasn't really been the same since. At number three, Steve Harvey. When it comes to live TV, the stakes are high since you can't really take anything back. You can't edit out your mistakes, and so when you slip up, everyone gets to witness the cringy affair. This is what happened to Steve Harvey back in 2015 during the Miss Universe competition, where he made one of the biggest mistakes in TV history. It was all coming down to the wire as the final vote was being read, and it was down to the last two contestants, Miss Columbia and Miss Philippines. The drum roll happened and Steve read off the name on the card, crowning Miss Columbia as the winner. There were cheers, but a lot of confusion as well. A few moments later, Steve returned to the stage to announce that he had actually read the card wrong and that Miss Columbia was actually the runner up. They had to take the crown from Miss Columbia and give it to Miss Philippines, the actual winner. The look on Steve's face in that moment said it all. He knew he was in big trouble. Everything was fixed in the end after that huge mess up, but since this pageant disaster, Steve's presenting career hasn't really been the same. No one can really forget the Miss Universe catastrophe of 2015. At number two, John Travolta. 2014 was a weird time. There were crises, important world events, and Flappy Bird was removed from the app store. Yes, that belongs in its own category because I still miss my beloved Flappy Bird. Another event that took place that year was the Oscars, which takes place every year. But 2014 was very special. In 2014, John Travolta created one heck of a meme. In that ceremony that year, John was due to introduce Adina Menzel, the voice of Elsa from Frozen, to hit the stage and sing the hit song, Let It Go. And it seemed like a simple enough task, except it wasn't. While John was supposed to introduce Adina to the stage, he instead called on someone named Adele Dazim. Now, I don't know who this Adele Dazim character is, but she sure does look a lot like Adina. That moment was embarrassing and caused a number of memes. A John Travolta name generator was even created online, adding to the craziness. 
The explanation behind the mishap is that according to John, that Adina's name had been changed on the teleprompter at the last minute, so it was spelled phonetically. John hadn't rehearsed the name like that, and so it messed him up, and Adele Dazeem was born. Now, I wouldn't say his career was completely over after this, but his presence on live TV and presenting career definitely took a hit after that. And finally, at number one, Kelly Osbourne. When you're on live TV, you always have to watch what you say because there's no taking it back, and a lot of celebrities seem to forget that from time to time. During an episode of The View, Kelly Osbourne really messed things up while trying to clap back at Donald Trump and she faced a lot of backlash from it. Just shortly before this episode aired, Donald Trump, who was at the time only a presidential nominee, was saying offensive things about the Latinx community and how he wanted to deport them. It was a highly controversial topic that really should have been a sign to what was to come, but I digress. Well, in a very poor attempt at clapping back at Trump's comments, Kelly said, quote, If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who's going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? Kelly was trying to defend the Latinx community, but rather than stand up for them, she ended up offending them even more as her remarks were interpreted as saying that the Latinx community is only good for being housekeepers like the offensive stereotype depicts. After facing so much backlash and realizing the gravity of her words, Kelly issued an apology saying, quote, I want to start by saying I always take responsibility for my actions. In this particular case, I will take responsibility for my poor choice of words, but I will not apologize for being a racist as I am not." End quote. This was one of Kelly's worst moments and certainly led her career to plummet after that. Now I want you guys to tell me if you've ever been on TV before. It can be really, really exciting to see yourself on the local news or even in a TV program, so I want to know about your experience down in the comments. Anyways guys, that's been our list. I've been your host Brie Room, and until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye friends!